So it's that time of year, we're seeing a lot of big bucks and this one here, it's gonna get prepared to go to the taxidermist. I wanted to show you just how we cape them. Uh, get a lot of questions on exactly how far they should go down. Wanna make sure that you come to the breastplate and you stop. I'm gonna show you just real quick how we do that, how we cape these out. I wanna show you how we do it in case you wanna go ahead and save the money and cape your own. Now, if we're doing it at the shop, we do the whole hide, uh, but since I'm trying to show you how to do it at the house, I'm just gonna show you where I break it. And again, the breastplate's right here. I wanna make sure that we leave the taxidermist plenty of hide. So I'm just gonna make a cut without going into the back strap area. And then when you're coming across this back, don't come down. Make sure that you stay here towards the tail. Giving them too much is never a problem. It's when you come into it and you don't give them enough hide to work with that you're gonna have issues. So I went ahead, I stayed up above it, made a good solid cut. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with the legs. I'm gonna break these shanks off. Now I do this just to help me, but I stay on the back side of this leg Come up to the knee. You're gonna see I follow that right back to that break. Show you one more time on this side. Right in the back side of that, follow that white line. Come up to where it's broke, just there. Now, just gonna skin down it. Gotta be real careful, you don't want any holes. Of course, a good taxidermist can fix a few mistakes, but don't give them too many. It's a good fat deer. See a nice fat cover. Can tell this is an early archery deer. Just followed that line I created. Now I'm back here in the area where I created that little line. Just gonna kinda be careful in this area. A little bit of pressure, you can pull down. See there, now I'm gonna come back into this brisket area. Now this, I'm gonna be really careful through here. Getting into an area, I don't wanna make any bad cuts. This deer has been in the cooler. Temperatures are cold. It always makes it a little harder to skin, which means I need to be a little more cautious and careful. Get a good break right there. You can see that hides really thin through there. I'm gonna be really careful into these shoulders right through here. This is a very dangerous area. You wanna make sure that I don't damage anything right through there, giving that taxidermist any extra work and trying to sew, sew that up. Made it through that brisket area with no cuts, no damage. Just kinda of let gravity help me a little bit on this back. We're getting into kind of a tricky area. Getting into the neck. I see there. So now I'm just basically down into that neck area and I'm just gonna continue to boot that down. You see here that I kind of changed knives. It's not as uh, edgy at the end and I'll just use it to kind of go down the neck. Yeah, there's still a lot of good a lot of good meat on the neck here. So I don't want to just kind of come in and waste a lot of it, but I also don't want to get into that hide. Hoist definitely makes it easy. And you'll see here that I'm using it so I can kind of turn it. There are times when I don't want it to move, but when I do these capes, I kind of like it to move around for me. Now we're kind of getting down in the deep part of this neck. So I'm gonna go back to my six inch curve flex. Again, I wanna get as much of this neck meat as I can, but I also don't wanna damage anything. 
base of the head's about right here, so I haven't wasted too much. And now I'm gonna use my Sawzall. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get my Sawzall, go ahead and break this spinal column here. Okay, there's a good cape. Also wanna make sure when you send these to the taxidermist that you don't put the nose inside the hide. Just make sure you kinda of leave it out. Because when they freeze it, it could create some damage right in here. So that's how we cape a deer.